Picture this. A young boy in Michigan, surrounded by a vast expanse of farmland. One would expect him to inherit the family plow and spend his days tending to crops. However, destiny had other plans for Henry Ford. Born into a world where agriculture reigned supreme, Ford's heart beat to the rhythm of machinery rather than the quiet hum of farm life. Let's dive into the next chapter of Henry Ford's extraordinary journey, where a childhood aversion to farming blossomed into a passion for innovation. Chapter 1. Early Passion. From Watches to Steam Engines, 1863 to 1880. In this chapter, we delve into the early years of a young boy from a quaint village just west of Detroit, a village that would become an unexpected cradle for an automotive revolution. The backdrop? A small village, seemingly disconnected from the gears of progress. Yet, it was precisely in this unassuming place that Henry Ford's fascination with the intricate world of machines began to unfold. While the rhythm of rural life echoed through the fields, Ford's heart beat to a different cadence, that of gears, cogs, and endless possibilities. Watches. Gateways to innovation. Picture young Henry surrounded by the ticking symphony of pocket watches. His peers, content with the simplicity of their agrarian surroundings, could hardly fathom the world that captivated Ford. In a stroke of curiosity that would define his future, he found joy not in the fields but in the delicate art of disassembling and reassembling the timepieces of his more affluent neighbors. These seemingly humble acts were the germination of a grand vision. Little did Ford know that each tick and talk of those watches would sow the seeds for a revolution that would reshape the very landscape of America. The intricate workings of those timepieces were a metaphor for the intricate dreams taking shape in the young inventor's mind. A machine whisperer in the making. As the years rolled on, so did Ford's understanding of machines. What started as an innocent exploration of watches soon evolved into a profound connection with the pulsating heart of technology. The simplicity of rural life could no longer contain his burgeoning curiosity. Detroit, with its emerging industrial heartbeat, beckoned to Ford, inviting him to explore the world beyond the fields. Chapter 2. Urban Odyssey. Detroit's Industrial Surge, 1881-1899. In this chapter, we fast forward to Ford's teenage years, a time when the world expanded beyond the horizons of the family farm. Detroit, the city of dreams just a stone's throw away, unfolds its industrial marvels, and for Ford, it's a symphony of steam and machinery. Picture a young Ford, his eyes wide with wonder, as he steps onto the bustling streets of Detroit. The city, once a distant promise on the horizon, now stands as a playground for a budding mechanic. The hum of steam engines reverberates through the air, and the rhythmic clanking of machinery becomes Ford's symphony, a melody that resonates with the promise of technological wonders. Detroit. A canvas of innovation. As Detroit emerges as an industrial hub, it provides the perfect canvas for Ford's explorations. The streets are lined with factories, each a beacon of progress, and the air is thick with the scent of innovation. This is no longer the quiet village life, this is the urban heartbeat that pulses with the possibilities of the future. From farms to factories, Ford's mechanical pilgrimage. Gone are the slow, exhausting days on the family farm. Ford, propelled by an insatiable curiosity, immerses himself in the world of technology. Steam engines, once a distant fascination during a school trip, are now part of his daily encounters. The clatter of machinery, the hiss of steam, these are the sounds that accompany Ford's footsteps as he navigates the industrial landscape of Detroit. Detroit, with its vast network of factories and opportunities, becomes Ford's training ground. Every encounter with a new machine, every moment spent tinkering and understanding, is a step toward the creation of a master mechanic. The city fuels his passion and sets the stage for the transformative journey that lies ahead. Chapter 3. Edison's Influence. Navigating Electricity and Gas Engines, 1890-1893. In this chapter, we delve into a pivotal period where Ford, driven by an insatiable thirst for knowledge, takes a bold leap into the realm of electricity and gas engines. Edison's Illuminating Influence. Picture Ford, now armed with a foundation in mechanics, is hungry for more. To bridge the gaps in his knowledge, he makes a daring move, he joins the local branch of the Edison Illuminating Company. This marks a turning point, where Ford steps into a world where electricity isn't just a utility but a catalyst for new possibilities. 
Under the glow of Edison's legacy, Ford's understanding of electric systems blossoms. The hum of generators, the crackle of live wires, these become familiar tunes in his daily life. The Edison Illuminating Company isn't just a workplace, it's a haven for a curious mind, and Ford seizes the opportunity to unravel the mysteries of electricity. Freedom to tinker, gas engines and beyond. But Ford's journey doesn't stop with electricity. The job at Edison not only illuminates bulbs but also grants him the freedom to experiment with gas engines. It's a playground for innovation, and Ford, fueled by curiosity, immerses himself in understanding the intricacies of these engines. Little does he know that these experiments are laying the foundation for something far greater. Gas engines became the building blocks of Ford's automotive dreams. The clanking of machinery takes on a new rhythm as Ford, like a maestro, orchestrates his experiments. Each spark, each whir of the engine, propels him closer to a vision that has yet to take concrete form, the vision of an automobile that would redefine transportation. Chapter 4. Birth of the Quadricycle, the first foray into automobiles, 1894-1899. In this chapter, we explore the birth of the quadricycle, Ford's initial venture into the world of automobiles. Learning from the Detroit Automobile Company. As Henry Ford dusts off setbacks from the Detroit Automobile Company, a crucial chapter in his education unfolds. While the venture proved short-lived, it served as a classroom where Ford learned valuable lessons. The intricacies of mass production, the reliance on external parts, these were hurdles that demanded innovative solutions. Quadricycle. A glimpse of the future. Undeterred by the setbacks, Ford's determination takes a tangible form, the quadricycle. Imagine a simple frame powered by an engine running on ethanol, with four bicycle wheels giving it life. It's not a masterpiece by modern standards, but in 1896, it was a revolutionary step into the realm of horseless carriages. The quadricycle, however, was not without its quirks. With only two gears and no reverse option, it presented challenges. Overheating became a frequent companion due to the absence of a cooling system. Yet, in adversity, Ford saw opportunity. He spent the next few years refining his creation, adding a cooling system, and making numerous improvements. Detroit to the world, Ford's leap of confidence. By 1899, Ford, now armed with an improved quadricycle, had taken a leap of confidence. He starts his own venture, the Detroit Automobile Company. With a capital of $150,000 and support from Detroit's elite, including friends from the Edison Company, Ford embarks on a mission to create an automobile that businesses can embrace. However, the road ahead isn't without its twists and turns. The Detroit Automobile Company faces challenges, and by 1902, with dissatisfaction among shareholders, Ford finds himself ousted from his own creation. The stage is set for a reimagining, a shift in strategy that will redefine the future of automotive history. Chapter 5. Model A to Model N, Pioneering Affordable Cars, 1900-1905. In this chapter, we delve into the transformative period from Model A to Model N, a phase where Ford's determination to make cars accessible to everyone takes center stage. A shift in perspective. Cars for the average Joe. Undaunted by the setbacks at the Detroit Automobile Company, Ford embarks on a visionary journey. The idea of a car not as a luxury but as a necessity for the common man, starts to germinate. It's a shift in perspective that will alter the course of automotive history. Collaboration with the Dodge Brothers Company. Understanding the importance of a reliable supply chain, Ford forms a strategic alliance. Enter the Dodge Brothers Company, a machine shop in Detroit that would later become an iconic American brand. This collaboration is not just about parts, it's about creating a synergy that will drive Ford's vision forward. From Model A to Model N, the evolution unfolds. With capital flowing from friends and family, Ford introduced the Model A in 1903. However, this is just the beginning. Over the next five years, Ford, sustained by collaborations and unwavering support, introduces a series of models, each a step closer to his vision of an affordable automobile for every household. Assembly lines and the dawn of mass production. The real game-changer, though, comes with Ford's experiments in assembly line techniques. Inspired by a visit to a Chicago slaughterhouse, Ford envisions the reverse, an assembly line for automobile production. 
In 1904, he establishes his own factory, laying the groundwork for what will soon become the epitome of efficiency in mass production. Model N. A triumph in affordability. In 1906, the culmination of Ford's efforts took shape in the form of the Model N. This affordable car becomes a symbol of innovation and accessibility. It's not just about producing cars, it's about creating a vehicle that the average person can aspire to own. A revolution gains momentum. By 1908, the momentum was undeniable. Ford is not just building cars, he's shaping a cultural shift. The Model T, designed with vanadium steel, emerges as a symbol of strength and quality. Borders flood in, production soars, and Ford's dream of making automobiles an integral part of American life is becoming a reality. Chapter 6. Vanadium Steel and Model T. A Game-Changing Alloy, 1906-1908. In this chapter, we unravel the pivotal role played by vanadium steel and the groundbreaking success of the Model T. A serendipitous encounter. Vanadium steel enters the scene. In the intricate web of history, sometimes a chance meeting changes everything. For Henry Ford, that moment occurred in 1907 when he began constructing a heat treatment plant for vanadium steel. The alloy, known for its exceptional strength and lightness, was a revolutionary find. What's intriguing is the Peruvian connection, the Flannery brothers, friends of Ford, who owned a vanadium mine in Peru, became the bridge to this game-changing steel. Vanadium steel, the secret ingredient. Vanadium steel wasn't just a material, it was the secret ingredient that would elevate Ford's automobiles to unprecedented heights. Its strength surpassed that of regular steel, and its lightness added a new dimension to the Model T's design. In essence, it wasn't about creating the cheapest car, it was about crafting the best car, and vanadium steel was the key. The birth of the Model T, strength in every detail. In 1908, the Model T was unleashed onto the world stage. Despite not being the most economical option, it quickly garnered attention for its unparalleled quality and durability. The alloy's role in this triumph couldn't be overstated. The Model T wasn't just a car, it was a testament to engineering excellence, setting a new standard in the automotive landscape. Frenzy of orders, the Model T phenomenon. The response was nothing short of extraordinary. Within weeks of its release, Ford received a staggering 25,000 orders for the Model T. This wasn't just a car, it was a phenomenon, a symbol of a new era in automobile manufacturing. The sheer demand spoke volumes about the American appetite for a quality vehicle that stood head and shoulders above the rest. Chapter 7. The Assembly Line Revolution, Scaling Production, 1909-1913. In this chapter, we delve into the transformative period of 1909 to 1913, where the assembly line took center stage, propelling Ford's production to unprecedented heights. Recognizing triumph. Expanding horizons. With the overwhelming success of the Model T, Henry Ford stood at a crossroads. Instead of resting on laurels, he opted for expansion. In 1909, a second factory emerged, a testament to Ford's unwavering commitment to innovation and progress. Little did the world know that this expansion was a prelude to something even more revolutionary. The birth of efficiency, perfecting the assembly line. The year 1913 would go down in history as a game-changer. Henry Ford introduced the moving assembly line, a revolutionary production method that would redefine manufacturing. It wasn't just about building cars, it was about crafting them with unparalleled efficiency. The assembly line allowed for a continuous flow of production, dramatically reducing the time it took to assemble a vehicle. Every part and every worker played a crucial role in the symphony of manufacturing. Doubling down on success, scaling production. Production doubled annually, with the Ford factory in 1910 assembling 20,000 Model Ts, which transformed into a powerhouse crafting over half a million cars by 1916. The assembly line wasn't just a logistical innovation, it was a cultural shift, marking the birth of mass production. Innovations beyond assembly, constant price reductions. Henry Ford was a visionary, not just in manufacturing but also in business strategy. A constant reduction in the price of the Model T became Ford's signature move. By 1918, half of all cars in America were Model Ts, a testament to Ford's commitment to making automobiles accessible to the average person. Division of labor, 
a page from Adam Smith, 1910-1917. The answer lies in an age-old concept articulated by Scottish economist Adam Smith in, The Wealth of Nations, The Division of Labor. Ford applied this concept to his manufacturing process, breaking down the production of a car into 84 discrete steps. This shift allowed unskilled workers to perform specific tasks with unparalleled efficiency, drastically reducing costs and increasing productivity. Scientific Management. The Frederick Taylor Influence, 1914. Ford's quest for efficiency didn't stop at the division of labor. Collaborating with efficiency expert Frederick Taylor, Ford embraced scientific management principles. By meticulously orchestrating workers' movements and introducing incentives based on productivity, Ford achieved a staggering 300% increase in productivity. The five-day work week and incentivized productivity became hallmarks of Ford's approach. The $5 Day. Rewriting the Labor Equation, 1914. In a move that shocked the business world, Henry Ford doubled the pay of his workers to $5 per workday in 1914. This transformative decision not only attracted dedicated workers from around the globe but also fueled their commitment to the company's success. The unprecedented strategy of sharing profits with both employees and customers created a virtuous cycle of efficiency, demand, and lower costs.